Welcome to Squirrel Sam TV. Fancy an ongoing collection of nature and wildlife videos? Just take a quick moment to subscribe and click the bell icon and you will never miss out again. Ok in this video we 15 fascinating crow facts. Intelligence runs in the crow family, a diverse group of more than 40 bird species. And, as with most geniuses, crows and their relatives tend to be misunderstood. Known as corvids, this family of birds includes not just crows, but also ravens, rooks, jays, jackdaws, magpies, treepies, nutcrackers, and chuffs. They range from the one-ounce dwarf jay, a small forest bird found only in Mexico, to the three-pound common raven, a wily opportunist found across the northern hemisphere. Corvids are incredibly clever overall, with the largest brain-to-body size ratios of any birds, but those in the genus Corvus tend to be especially brainy. Humans have long recognized the craftiness of crows and ravens, as seen in centuries of folklore casting the birds as thieves, tricksters, problem solvers. Crows often get a bad rap. In many Western cultures, they've historically been associated with death, disease, and bad omens. Reviled as crop stealers by farmers, and condemned as nuisances by city dwellers. But the birds are fascinating creatures, adaptable and brainy to an extent that's almost scary. Here are a few facts about these crafty corvids that might surprise you. Number 1. All crows and ravens belong to the same genus. Members of the genus Corvus can be found on every continent except Antarctica and South America, although other close relatives live there. To date, scientists have named 40 species. Colloquially, some of them are referred to as ravens while others are called crows, rooks, or jackdaws. Historically, the name raven has been given to several of the big-bodied Corvus birds with shaggy feathers on their necks. Mid-sized members of the genus are usually called crows, while the very smallest species go by the name jackdaws. There's also a large beaked outlier known as the rook, which was named after the unusual sound it makes. Telling him apart can be tough, but it is possible for eagle-eyed birders. One big indicator is size, the common raven is much larger, about the size of a red-tailed hawk. It also has a more wedge-shaped tail. Ravens soar longer than crows, and you can see through their wing feathers as they fly, among other differences. And the birds' calls are substantially different. Number 2. Older crow siblings can help their parents raise newborn chicks. Like a lot of intelligent animals, most crows are quite social. For instance, American crows spend most of the year living in pairs, they usually mate for life, or small family groups. During the winter months, they'll congregate with hundreds or even thousands of their peers to sleep together at night in a sprawling communal unit called a roost. Come nesting season, a mated pair of crows might be lucky enough to receive chick-rearing help. Juvenile birds are frequently seen defending their parents' nests from predators. Other services they can provide include bringing food to mom and dad or feeding their younger siblings directly. One study found that 80% of American crow nests surveyed had a helping hand. And some birds become regular nest assistants, providing aid to their parents for over half a decade. Number 3. When a crow dies, its neighbors may have a funeral. The sight of a dead crow tends to attract a mob of a hundred or more live ones. During this ritual, the live crows almost never touch the dead one, which rules scavenging out as a motive. Why do they do this? Some studies suggest that the mass gathering is part of a survival strategy. The birds are learning about threats and seem hesitant to revisit any spot where they've encountered a dead crow, even if food is plentiful there. I remember seeing farmers hanging dead crows on fences around their land to keep other crows away. Number 4. Crows have caused blackouts in Japan. Since the 1990s, crows have experienced a population boom in Japan, where, not coincidentally, delicious garbage is more plentiful than ever before. This is bad news for power companies. 
Urban crows like to nest on electric transformers and will often use wire hangers or fiber optic cables as building materials for their nests. The result was an epidemic of crow caused blackouts in major cities around Japan. Between 2006 and 2008, the Corvid stole almost 1400 fiber optic cables from Tokyo power providers. And according to the Chubu Electric Company, crows are responsible for around 100 power failures per year in their facilities alone. To fight back, Chubu started installing artificial, love nests, in 2004. Made with non-conductive resin, the nests are placed on company towers high above the power lines, where the birds are unlikely to cause any trouble. The strategy seems to be working, 67% of the faux nests are currently in use, making life a lot easier for Chubu employees. Number 5. Proportionally, some crows' brains are bigger than yours. Crows are so smart and so good at improvising that some zoologists admiringly call them feathered apes. And yet, from a primate's perspective, crow brains might look puny. The new Caledonian crow, for example, has a brain that weighs just 0.26 ounces. But relative to its body size, that brain is huge, accounting for 2.7% of the bird's overall weight. By comparison, an adult human's 3-pound brain represents 1.9% of their body weight. Of all the living birds, crows, ravens, and parrots have the biggest brain-to-body size ratios. Number 6. Crows have regional dialects. Apart from the famous caw, caw noise, crows emit a number of other sounds. Each one sends out a different message, for example, Cawing can be used as a territorial warning or a way for crows to signal their location to relatives. The noises vary regionally, like human dialects that can vary from valley to valley. If a crow changes its social group, the bird will try to fit in by talking like the popular guys mimicking the calls of dominant flock members. Number 7. Some crows can read traffic lights. In parts of the world, carrion crows use cars like oversized nutcrackers. The birds have learned to take walnuts, a favorite treat, over to road intersections, where they put the hard-shelled snacks down onto the pavement. The crow then waits for a passing vehicle to smash the nut, after which it will swoop down and eat the delicious interior. Crows are often seen eating squashed dead animals by the road and moving out of the way at the last minute. It's a risky trick, but the crows aren't usually run over because, unlike some people, they've figured out what traffic lights mean. Carrion crows wait until the light turns red before flying down to place the uncracked nut on the road. The second the light goes green, the crow takes off to watch the nut get run over from afar. It will even wait for the next red to scoop up the nut's insides. Number 8. Crows can recognize your face, and hold a grudge. You don't want a crow for an enemy. Research has shown that crows can recognize and remember who is nice and who is nasty towards them. They then gossip and tell other crows. The moral of this story? Mind your manners around crows. Because if you mistreat them, they won't forget you and neither will their friends, or the next generation. Number 9. Crows make and use tools. Lots of non-human animals, including chimpanzees and orangutans, create useful implements which help them survive in the wild. The new Caledonian crow is one of only two species on the planet that can craft its own hooks in the wild. The other is Homo sapiens. Number 10. Crows fight off predators by ganging up on them. Crows have to deal with a menagerie of predators, such as hawks, owls, coyotes, and raccoons. To ward them off, the corvids exploit the fact that there can be strength in numbers. Upon seeing a would-be attacker, crows are known to gather, with some groups consisting of a dozen birds or more. Individual crows then swoop down to deliver passing blows with their beaks, often inflicting serious bodily injury in the process. If all goes well, the target will back off, though it may kill a few of the dive bombers before they retreat. 
Corvids are by no means the only avians that mob would be attackers. Swallows, chickadees, and even hummingbirds have all been documented doing this. In fact, crows are sometimes at the receiving end of mob violence as smaller songbirds often feel threatened by them and lash out collectively. Number 11. You can call a group of crows a murder. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, OED, the correct term for a group of crows is a murder. An expression birdwatchers and poets have been using since at least the 15th century. Which the OED speculates may allude to the crow's traditional association with violent death, or, to its harsh and raucous cry. Number 12. Crows have shrewd ways to get food. Crows tend to be opportunistic and creative, commonly exploiting new food sources or adopting new feeding strategies to make their lives easier. The American crow is known to catch its own fish, for example, in some cases even using bread or other food as bait to lure fish closer. This species often steals food from other animals, sometimes even secretly following victims back to their nests or food caches. Many crows also drop snails and hard-shelled nuts from the air while flying, using gravity and the ground to do the hard work for them. Number 13. Crows don't just use tools, they also make them. Many corvids use tools. Like chimps, they use sticks or other plant matter to fish insects out of crevices. That alone is impressive, especially without hands, but it's just one of many tricks up their sleeves. In addition to choosing tools that are naturally well-shaped for a particular task, New Caledonian crows also manufacture tools in the wild. Which is much rarer than just using found objects. This ranges from trimming the leaves off a stick, to creating their own hook-shaped tools from twigs, leaves, and thorns. Number 14. Crows can solve puzzles on par with human kids. In Aesop's fable, The Crow and the Pitcher, a thirsty crow encounters a pitcher with a little water in it, but is initially thwarted by the low water level and the bottle's narrow neck. Then the crow starts dropping pebbles into the pitcher, however, eventually raising the water level high enough for it to drink. Not only has research verified that crows can do this, but it shows they can pass. The water displacement test at a level similar to human children between the ages of 5 and 7. Crows have conquered a variety of other convoluted tests. Number 15. Crows mate for life. Crows are not only social birds but also more family-oriented than many people realize. They mate for life, meaning a mated pair will typically stay together for the rest of their lives. I love crows. Crows do sometimes raid farms and gardens, but any damage they cause may be offset by ecological benefits like seed dispersal and eating pest insects. Plus, while any species has an inherent right to exist, we're especially lucky to have brainiacs like corvids living among us. They can help us learn more about our own intelligence, but also remind us how much we still have in common with the wildlife all around us. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more nature videos from Squirrel Sam TV.